What's going on, people? Welcome to the match preview as we look ahead to the game against Everton on the weekend. Quick turnaround, games coming thick and fast. And as usual, I'm joined by T, Patrick, and Stan for a big game. Big game because we don't tend to get back to back wins. And this is another opportunity where we can potentially get it, but it's not going to be easy. We'll be talking about Everton's form and much more as well. So let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts ahead of the game. As always, if you like the video, smash the like button and subscribe to not miss our future content. I'll start off with UT. Palace Everton. We beat Wolves, came from behind. Everton, last game now, they lost to Newcastle. Um, and, you know, they've had a few problems in that game. Do you think a back-to-back -back win, are you confident of a back-to-back -back win for Palace in this game? Absolutely. I think it's absolutely something that we can do. I think we should we should be going in with the with the with the thought of doing big things and, and going in and getting three points. I think the most important thing for us in this match is to start fast. Something that we haven't done um recently. I think uh in, in order to go up there and and, 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 and uh do what we need to do, I think we need to take it to him from the beginning. Yeah, I agree. I agree. A strong start is needed, especially away from home. If you give them that edge, their crowd. We've seen it last season. Patrick, this is the first time we're going back to Goodison Park after them that pitch invasion and all that chaos that went on. So we know how the crowd can be there. They can, you know, they can be on top of the plays, literally, at times. But you we talk we talked about it briefly in a match reaction show. You've been fairly confident, but um, where does that confidence stem from because as i mentioned patrick back-to-back -back wins it viera spoke about as well we need to be a bit more consistent we just haven't been consistent so far and i feel like this is a good opportunity but then again we have that one big player miss now and i think that's the big talking point going into this game chick decore without chick decore do you still feel like we've got enough in this squad especially in midfield to go and get this win because for me the midfield is one of the keyest areas in terms of how we play viera ball and when you take out our, take out our best midfielder, arguably, it could become tricky for us. When I watched Everton play today, and they didn't impress me at all. Um, they had like picked one or two shots on goal the entire match. Never rated Lampard as a manager ever. Last year's match was a joke. We had the lead, and we would have won that match. I know the game meant more to them than it meant to us, but if it wasn't for that pitch invasion. They would have not come back in that game. There was no chance they would have come back in that game. It just turned the whole. Um, you know, game. So I know we haven't won there since what 2014. I guess the 3-2 win away. It's going to be tough. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not moving off my two nothing uh, prediction. I don't, I don't think. Did I say two That's or three? three? Nah, three. Yeah, I'm not moving well, we'll off predictions off later on. But I might. No, 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 no. I'm getting that in early. Three nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to reiterate. I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't. Do not rate that team. I watched them today. Um, they're not. They're not very good. They're just not. And like you just said, you were talking about their their, their form. They've won what two matches out of eleven all season. They're not any good now. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. And yes, I know we're not. We haven't been, good, but I'm confident we can get that win on Saturday. I really am. Yeah. So Stan, let's talk about the league table and talk about our confidence. I think if we, if we potentially, as it stands right now, there are games being played on Thursday. We're recording after the games have finished on Wednesday evening. As it stands, if we win, we could potentially go up to seventh, a draw to ninth, and if we lose, down to fifteenth. So this is one of them games, just like the Wolves game, where it can swing both ways. 7 to 15, if you're talking about top half European spots to 15 and mid-table, bang mid-table. So in terms of this game and the significance, do you think it's important that we get at least something out of this game to make sure that we're top half there and about? Because a loss can mean that we drop down a few spaces that could just take the, take the edge out of us. 100%. Um, obviously, like I'm saying, what all you guys are saying, I want to go out and win this game, etc., etc. But we're three unbeaten. And I think it's important to keep that going. Um, so do I want to win the game? Absolutely. Would I be disappointed with a point up there? Absolutely not. We hardly ever get anything up there. Do you know what I mean? So I think get a point, you know, just creeps us up that table a bit. Other results go our way, whatever. <clears throat> Why not? Yeah, for me, look, I'm 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 50-50. I think if Decore plays, I'm I'm a bit more confident. I'm not too sure if I'd be too displeased with a point. I'm I'm trying to process it and I still haven't come to the conclusion. With with UT, I know we'll talk about score prediction later on, 
Mm -hmm. Or do you think a point away from home at Everton would be the worst result? Like, would that still be decent enough for us to have that momentum going? The only problem is, Patrick Vieira said it, you know, we've got the momentum now, three mm -hmm. games unbeaten going mm -hmm. into this game. But the next phase that we need to get into is consistency, which we haven't done so far in the Vieira era. Yeah. So this game, for me, would prove a massive point if we do win the game. But then again, when you don't have your the number six that's been so key for you so far this season, it's not going to be easy. It isn't. Yeah, on paper, on paper, I think when you think about our situation going into the match without having our six, playing up at Everton, knowing – how we performed there over the past almost decade. Um, the idea of, of pulling a point would be, I think, satisfactory to a lot of people. But mm. in all honesty, I think it's the way in which you get the point. Because I think we could find ourselves back here a little bit less impressed or somewhat disappointed, d depending on how we play in that match in which we got the point. You know what I mean? If it's a situation where we go up 2-0 and we allow them to pull two back and 2-2 and two, two draw it, like I feel like the conversation of us taking a point from that match would be a lot different than if, you know, it was just a, a decent match and we were able to get a point away. So I think a part of it is just how we come out and, and play in the match too. Yeah. I, look, Patrick, we spoke about results versus performance. And in this game, I kind of agree. Like, for, results are always going to be, I guess, more important than performances because that's yeah. what matters. Whereas, actually, you can have that debate. Performances, if you have bad performance again, results, then it might catch up to you. You can uh, make that argument. But in this game, for me, Patrick, I'm not too sure about you, but performance is important because last time out at our away game against Leicester, we did struggle. We struggled with the performance. We only got the point. So in this game, is another away game. is another chance for a back-to-back -back win. And for me, I need to see us perform. I need to see us perform at a better level than we did against Leicester for me to have that confidence because it, it would always be the same thing if we have another bad, another bad performance with a point. If we have a good performance and drop the point, maybe it's a bit more respectable. We were unlucky not to win. But against Leicester, we were lucky to get the point, um, you can argue, in our last away game. So... For me, performance matters more this game than it did maybe in any other games. For you, last time around, we beat them 2014, a long time ago. How do you how do you see this one in terms of performance versus result? I guess you want both ideally, but would you be happy if we got a point against them, if we had a good performance? Everyone happy with a point, honestly, but um, I don't like Everton. I don't like Lampard, so... Um, a point won't bother me, but I'd much rather get the win, obviously. But, I mean, listen, we're at the point of the season where we need to get points off the sides we're playing because they're most of them below us or all below us. Uh, a point away, to me, is never a bad thing. We had this discussion in a group a chat before about I, I rate that Newcastle point a lot more than most people do because even though we played poorly and got very lucky, they're a very good side. Uh, Everton aren't in that same bracket. But, again, an away point is an away point. So would, would I be unhappy? No. The manner of it wears off on me after a while. Honestly, I know you guys talk about oh, you know, last few. I, I don't really honestly, matter. You know, you know, time changes the way I look at things. So no, I mean, a point I would take, but I'm, I'm really, really think, despite we're missing of shape, the Corey, that we're gonna come out and put up performance and the points on Saturday. Yeah, I, th I think the main benefit is is this. I know our last five games head to head, we've had two two wins against them, one draw and two losses. But right. the last time we beat them at their ground was back in 2014. So the wins have come at our ground. Of course, we're winning this game. But Stan, when you look at Newcastle's last five, not Newcastle, when you look at Everton's last five games, um, they lost three in a row now, um, and the wins have come against Southampton and West Ham. They've had zero draws. So, in a way, this is probably a good time to face them. Am I right in saying that? Or they might have a point to prove as well. I'm, I'm a bit 50-50 on that. I've seen today's comments from Everton fans, and they've said that we need a win on Saturday. It seems like the pressure is on them. But then again, can, can we handle that? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a big game for them. Um, I don't think it's ever a good time to play anyone in the Premier League. Um 
personally. I don't, I, I, I don't because it's it's the best league in the world for a reason. Even even the teams at the bottom are going to give you a game. Do you know what I mean? And that we, we've seen that throughout the years. I think um, Lampard's going to get him up, try and get him up for it. Whether he does or he doesn't, nobody knows. Um, it's about time we won up there, man. You know, um, it's about time years. we won up there. So, and yeah. it's got to happen sooner or later. And, you know, but like I said, I, you know, we want to win. I would, would I be happy with a point? Absolutely, because it's not an easy place to go. But, yeah, we've had opportunities previously to win up there and we haven't done it. So it would be nice to do it this time. And D, I want to yeah. just add that, you know, we played them last year three times, played them in the FA Cup. Remember, we beat them very handily at home in the FA Cup, beat them mm -hmm. in the league, you know. So, yeah, the first one wasn't under him, it was under the previous manager, I get that part. But we played them really well last year and we really should have beat them three times. That Again, I'll go back to it. That, that, we're up two in, the, in that match and then, you know, everyone knows what happened. So yeah, I'm not we'll scared of Everton. Yeah. Again? Say that again? Uh, it was silly from us. I, I it think. was. No, I mean, a lot of play, but I also believe again, that, it was after uh, the FA Cup semi final, and we saw it, it. Like, we can all agree, right. we can sit here after the FA Cup semi final. We were not the same team towards the end of the right. season. It, and it also, obviously, crazy, they need that win a lot more than we did. They were struggling, and they were relegated. That saved them. You know, we yeah, beat them, they probably got relegated. It was a yeah. massive game for them. It was a, a nothing game for us. We still were up 2 0 up. So, I really believe that all things unique, which they are right now. They're struggling. They're not, you know, they're not going down if we if we beat them. I think if we play our best and they play their and them, even if it's the way we can beat them. That's what I believe. So, so yeah, so look, we talked about Decore, we briefly mentioned them, but let's talk right. about where the game can be won and lost. For me, I think it's in midfield. Now Decore ain't there, but who comes in? Who comes in for you guys? For me, I, I think he puts in Luca. I just don't see that reader world starting in that position. And if it ain't Luca or Reader World, then who is it going to be? Uh, is there any other shouts from you guys? I, I think it's Luca that starts there. But do you guys think he might go with a different option? I I just don't see it happening. You know what? It, it could be Will Hughes, um, depending on if he's better. The one thing I will say is IU will have some involvement. I think IU is going to start somewhere on the field. He is going to start in in some position because I think that he does as much as sometimes he you know he frustrates us and he slows the game down etc cetera, etc. Cetera, he will offer a, a different outlet and get in amongst them, um, and you need that especially when you're going to play like Idrissa Gay, you're going to play Anana, play against an, uh, Onana, and they're you know they're centre forward as well. That Malpa, he, I mean he, he he loves playing against Palace, doesn't he? He'd yeah. be well up for it. Yeah, yeah. I play Calvin Lewin uh, today. I was gonna say I don't think it'll be it'll be Cavaloon up front and did he play today? Did yeah, they played they played him today. Yeah, yeah. he started. I think that it'll do. I back in there with Ezra and I would put uh, Are you back out wide? That's what I would do. It doesn't change a lot. It's really basically one player being Decore, Ezra in yeah. the middle before. I do not rate their midfield. I know Arnana's a good player, but they all be and Gay and uh, just a Gay. Just a Gay left. Um, uh, Everton went to PSG, you know, didn't do well, came back. He's an okay player. He gave the ball away the other day for a goal. He's not as good as people make him out there. Onana is a very good player. We can dominate the midfield if Olise and um, as they got a good speed, give them the ball. Get the ball and give it to them. You know, and then get get Ayo on the other side to track up and down on the, on, um, whether it be, um, it, it, it was this, um, Gordon or Gray, whatever side they play on. I think, we, I think we're fine with Luka in the middle. If Luka doesn't work out, Jairo's played the last two matches, guys, and I think his opportunity now is for him. If he's not doing well, you can always bring Jairo in second half, change it up. And as uh, Stan said, if he's fit, Hughes can come on. I wouldn't start Hughes. Hughes hasn't been around in the squad for like three, four matches. But you can always have Hughes as a, as a, as, a, as another person. So for me, I have no problem with Luca playing. I really don't. If he if he has to be him. No, yeah. The I, one, I, yeah, on, sorry, the one thing I want to say as well, like with this squad. Like we've always said, and you know, I've been an advocate, not an advocate, but I've been someone that said this that we're lacking depth, we're missing this, we're missing that. But look, now's the opportunity for some of those players to prove yeah. people like me wrong. Do you know what I mean? So come in and show us what you're all about. Come in and show us that you can handle it. Like Decore is a huge miss. All right, well, let's see what Luca or Will Hughes can do and where, where, where they can go. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm overreacting. Do you know what I mean? It's not not the first time. Won't be the last. So. Well, at least you know. At least you know. <laughs> yeah. At least you know about that. But yeah. look, but 
I think I agree with Patrick. I, I think I take out Schlop in that midfield. I, I really do. I, I think I put Eze. I, I keep Eze there. I put Elise or Ayu there, and I put Luca back there. I guess you can argue: Does that have balance in midfield? I don't think. I don't think we really have a realistic option or balance. So the, the only way we have balance in this midfield without Decore is if you put Luke and Gyro there. Now Luke and Gyro haven't played together, and two. That's even that you can argue is a bit too defensive. It's I think we should fair. just use the plays that we've got. Okay, we haven't got Decore. So what else can we do? We we've got attackers that could potentially cause them problems in midfield and keep them occupied like that. So for me, Eze and Elise, where it could be Jordan Ayu there ahead of Jeffrey Schlapp, but I just don't start Schlapp because Schlapp caught, cool, he had a all right game against Wolves, but he did get caught out at times as well. Without Decore behind him, I'm just worried. I'd rather have an attacker there that can actually do something proper going forward rather than a player that's kind of 50-50. You know what? It's funny. I, I, I totally forgot about Jeffrey Schlapp when I gave my midfield. No, did I? <laughs> yeah, so what if you played Schlapp, which again, this is radical, play Schlapp as in Decore's role and put as a and nah, only said and put that. are you out wide okay you know what you say that no but then you don't then if you have that issue with luca which everybody seems to have then you put schlop in that position no no i think I no, mean, no. It, the reason i play luca ahead of jeffrey schlop any day of the week okay in that role because that's fair. he's that's a better fair. defender he's a better right. passer than jeffrey schlop so jeffrey schlop cannot play as a number six if he that's does fair. that then forget about it we we might as well play with 10 men it's going to be like do you think, do you think are you right might play as an eight what was that do you think Ayu might play as a number eight? Yeah, I, th I, I think, but the thing is, you have to start. I think you start Ayu, whether that's on the right hand side, he sports job board, fair enough, or he plays right. down the middle. I think Ayu has to start in this game. Ayu and Elise should start. Like, I think well, Elise and Elise in the middle on the alongside Luca or Will Hughes. Yeah, yeah, there's different combinations you can do. You can have Ayu out wide or Ayu in the middle and Elise out wide. But I think Eze and Luca should start in midfield. That's, that's how I see it. T do you, do you, where do you stand with these midfield free and combination that we can do in this game? Well, I think uh, when you were talking about what Patrick Vieira might do, I mean, I think we're, we're more likely to see him do something that he's already done, which for me would be to have as an Elise in the midfield together, and therefore probably starting uh, IU out wide. We haven't seen IU start in the center yet. We've seen yeah, him go there later on in the, in the game after substitutions and things. Yeah. We haven't seen him start there yet. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Eze and Elise start in the middle with Luca behind them and then see Luca probably drop in between the center backs when we're in possession and yep. kind of almost like a, in, a, in a back three setup. That way you can have Eze and Elise push forward and then you have your, your, um, your right and your left back supporting. Yeah. yeah, and have your right and your left back supporting too. Uh, that's that's what I would think would probably give us the best balance as far as attacking and defending. But who knows? Yeah, I, I think I think when you look at the injuries, let's talk about the injuries. I I don't believe there's any new injuries from the game against Wolves. It seemed like everyone was fine, but then again, there's this question mark. So Will Hughes, he's out in he, well, he's out ill. How mm -hmm. ill is he? I. I I have zero clue. Um, it could be COVID and not saying what it is. Yeah, he's probably got the Rona or something. Yeah, he probably yeah, could be COVID and not saying anything. And then you got, yeah. and then you got Richards. The, anyone seen him? He's, he's disappeared after the international break. I no, don't, I don't know. know. Interview on the Palace app today. He'll be. Um, I think he'll be back in about a week or two. Yeah. yeah. So with the with the injuries, uh, it seems like we got no new injury concerns. But of course, if Will Hughes comes back, then. That could be a possibility, but then again, is Vieira re Vieira ain't gonna start him, is he? Like after an illness as well. No, because if you're talking, yeah, if you're talking illness, the 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 main thing that's gonna come with that is lack of fitness. Right. You know what I'm saying? With being you sick, have, so uh, you'd have you have Schlupp, Luke, and Gyro all of play who are fit. Are you? There's no way he's not someone that hasn't been on the bench for the last three, four matches. There's no way he'll be on the yeah. bench possibly. And has been playing start. sparingly, even when he's been available. Even, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. And I, look. We, we know we have to do better than what we've done against Leicester, especially going forward. There's there's no question about that. With Wilf, Elise, Edouard on a pitch, we should be doing better. But interestingly, I don't know about you guys, but in this game, I'm looking at Damari Gray versus Joel Wood. I think Joel Wood could... I don't want to I don't want to say this and it hurts me, but I think Joel Wood could do a job. I think this is a game for Joel Wood to kind of redeem himself for the last two games because he's been a target and he just needs to... With Ayu maybe there, you can... You can Slightly redeem himself so teams don't just literally attack him. 
because even right. in the second half against Wolves, you saw it like when they cut inside, he just loses a guy. He can't catch catch up with him. Maybe down the line he can stick up, but that cutting inside, he just he's too slow to turn around. And I think in this game against Damari Gray, I know he's fast, I know he's silky. I still feel like Joe Wood can do a decent job. So that's another player that I'm looking at. Uh, you know any other would... players that you guys are looking forward to in this game? We talked about the midfield. I think that's the most key area, really. You know what I say about Damari Gray, D? Is Damari Gray is all or nothing. He either has a blistering, amazing game, True. or he's yeah. just, he's not Anonymous. there. Do you know well, what I mean? You said the same with Wardy. <laughs> like, um, no, but I'm talking from an attacking point of view. He's either like, Damari Gray is either ripping, ripping someone a new one, or he is literally anonymous. Like, he's just like, He's hitting them into row Z 50 times in a game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, D, yeah. For me, D, the way I'm more worried about Anthony Gordon on the other side. But the thing we have Mitchell on that side, at least, who I'm yeah. very comfortable that can handle him. But Anthony Gordon, to me, the better player than Mario Gray is. I mean, you know, he had that huge link to Chelsea early in the season. And uh, he's he's got off to a good start. I know he's got a few goals in the season. So, um, but um, I'm worried about Gray, Gray again. As uh, and rightly said, he's hit and miss. I mean, Gordon has... Two goals. Awobi has one. Connor Cody has one. They don't score goals. Yeah, they don't score well, goals. I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the favorable matches. Has, like, has my play like scored good enough attackers to break them down? They're, they're sort of defensively, but we've got good enough attack. By the way, Gordon and Gray, according to Everton fan and Everton fan that I follow on Twitter, uh, they both had a meh against Newcastle in their last game. So that that's a positive. Uh, has has, so has Mo scored it. for them at all or not? Uh, what was that? Yeah, has Neil Malpai scored for them at all or not? I, yes, I yes, I'm pretty sure, but I can't remember what game. One, yeah. But talking about scoring, let's wrap this up now. Um, <laughs> we, we've talked about a few things here. What Palace can do, what what can hurt Palace potentially. But now, the favourite part of the show, score prediction, which Patrick has already said like 50 times before we even recorded the match preview and got to this part of the show. <laughs> so, Patrick, yours going 3-0? Is there even a point of even yes. asking you? 3-0? Who are the goal yeah, scorers? Like, exactly. Can I give you the goal scorers? You're being very... Oh, okay, cool. Goal scorers, um, so go ahead. Joachim Anderson, first goal, of, second goal this season. Mm. First. Anderson, um, Olise, and Edward. Oh, someone's scoring two. Oh, wait, 3 0. Did you say 3 0? 4 0. He said 3. He said well, three. remember, yeah, remember three. I keep checking. Yeah, you, you corrected me. I thought it was two, but I'm going to go with three because I don't want to go back on it. I've told the universe. 3 0 from so Patrick. Three. That is positive T. Are you sticking with the positivity line? Do you think we can get that result? You said that you were confident. I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down on my man, Patrick. That's the oracle right there. 3-0. Three 3-0 nil, <laughs> three nil to the Palace. I'm going to go with an Edward Three. Brace. I'm going to go with an Edward Brace. brace and like I'm like going to go as a getting uh, another one. No one's going yeah. for a Zaha hat trick, no? <laughs> Stan. <laughs> Well, you could go oh, for the yeah. Zaha hat trick. You, you can go for it. It's, <laughs> it's wide open. Take it, man. <laughs> are, you, are, you um, are, you, are you also expecting three goals as well? I mean, let's. I, I feel like this could hurt us. Um, everyone's saying three nil. I'm gonna say another two-one win. Mm. Um, a bit more realistic. Um, and I'm gonna go for Eddie and Wilf to score. Eddie and Wilf. I'm going for. I want. One I want to say two-one. Mm. But let me not say 2-1. I think 2-0. <laughs> Why not? I'm going to go 2-0. I'm going to go 2-0. Of course, Edward, if Elise and Eze and Zaha are starting, Edward's going to be involved in some type of goal. I don't know if he's getting a goal or assist. Um, without a doubt. I'm just thinking of Patrick's face. I don't know what's wrong with Patrick. Um, but Edward is getting a goal and assist. I don't know what one it is. Uh, but the other player for me is probably... Jeffrey Schlupp off the bench. Why not? It will be so mm, wow. Mm, Look at that. Wow. Jeffrey Schlupp off okay. the bench. What 90th, okay. 90th minute winner. Full house wins. Full house. Everyone's confident. Let us know what you guys think in the conversation down below. That's it for another match preview. Massive game for us. As I said, we could potentially go up to seventh and imagine, imagine sitting in seventh going into the next set of games that we got. We need to, for me, we shouldn't lose this game. That's the most important thing. In a way, I don't know if I'll be happy with a draw. I need to, I still need to decide. But let us know what you guys think in the conversation down below. Would you be happy with a draw? And also make sure to subscribe because we've got more content coming up throughout the week. Until next time, up the palace. <laughs>